Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be filming a how to curl your hair video. Over the years of curling my hair, I've picked up a couple of tips and tricks that I love to share with you guys. So whether you're new to curling your hair or you've curled your hair for a while and you just want to hear the way that I do it, I'd love for you to watch this video. I'm going to be sharing the curler that I use and alternative curlers that I've used before and the products I use and how I curl my hair. I personally have really thick hair so it took me a long time to figure out what products and what color and what curling methods would work for me. So that's what I'm sharing with you guys today. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is what products to use on your hair and what curler to use specifically. So the specific curler that I use is the Numi 5-in-1. Um, it comes with five different interchangeable barrels, so you can literally just take them off. You just twist this and it comes off. So it comes with this part, which is um, just like the heater part, and it comes with five different barrels, which is super helpful because you can get different kinds of weights, different sizes, and I'm not sure of the specific sizes of these. I'll list them down below, but there are three um, just regular, um, they're all the same like size up and down. This one is the biggest one and then obviously this is smaller. Um, I use this one the most because it's just a standard medium sized barrel. But there's also a couple more that this set comes with. There's like, I think this is called a bubble wand where the curls are really textured and different like along because like some of your hair will wrap around the thicker side and some will wrap around the thicker side. So uh, yeah, it comes with this and it also comes with a one that is like bigger on the bottom and then shorter on the top and this one is really good for creating curls that um, are bigger at the like top and then get smaller towards the bottom. I would definitely recommend this set because it comes with all these different barrels so you can definitely experiment with all kinds of different curl sizes and shapes but it is pricey because it comes with so much. I would recommend the Numi brand if you want a good curler that will not like break on you a couple years down the road because this has lasted me for a long time already. So I would definitely recommend the Numi brand and I'll link their website down in the description below. If you're looking for something a little bit more affordable, I just go with the wand that they have on their website with um, this medium sized barrel and they have all kinds of different sets and all kinds of different wands for different prices. And a tip is that around Christmas time, the wands are significantly cheaper. Like, I'm pretty sure this set is around like $300 or, I don't know, don't quote me on that, it'll be in the description down below. But this set is really expensive on its own, but around Christmas time, I think I was able to get it around like $100. So yeah, they definitely have huge discounts around the holiday season, so if you're willing to wait for that long, then I would definitely wait because you can save a lot of money. Oh, and the set also comes with a glove, which is really nice for people who burn themselves really easily when curling their hair, aka me. Another option for curlers are ones that come with clamps, like this one here. Um, as you can see, it comes with a clamp. This one is by Hot Tools. And I used this one before I bought my Mimi one, and it was alright. I really didn't feel like the curls lasted that long. Um, it's a better one on the market, but I would still definitely go for the Numi one because I feel like Numi has really got its game down for uh, curling wands. For those of you who are wondering how you curl your hair with um, the barrel one, all you do is you open this, you clamp a section of hair at the bottom, and then you twist up like this. And that's pretty easy because you don't have to hold like your hair around the curler. Also, with ones with clamps, if you have one with a clamp, a problem that a lot of people run into is that their hair will get like a crease from the clamp. But what you can also do is if you just take a section of hair, you don't have to use a clamp. You can simply just use this and just roll it around like that, which you would do with the new me one that doesn't have a clamp. So yeah, that's just an option if you have a curler already with a clamp and you find that your hair creases with the clamp, you don't have to use it. Now moving on to products that I use when I curl my hair. The first one that I use is this Garnier dry shampoo, and I really like this one. I've tried a ton of different dry shampoos on the market. I tried the Batiste one, I think it's called Batiste one, 
when it was really popular, but I personally didn't really like it that much. I also found that the scents were really strong and I didn't like that either. The scent of this one is really good. I like it much better. But yeah, I just use this to add more volume into my hair. So I just spray this into my hair. And then just kind of run through my fingers through it so that there's like so that's evenly distributed. And as you can see, my hair has a lot of volume. After that, I comb my hair just to make everything a lot more uniform. And the next product I use is a heat protectant. Heat protectant is really important, especially if you curl your hair often, because the heat can really damage your hair, especially if you're curling your hair a lot. So I definitely recommend a heat protectant because this can make sure that your hair stays protected. Um, the one that I use specifically is a Chi Iron Guard, and I would recommend this one for sure because it's kept my hair really strong and I apply heat. I don't like curl my hair too often, but when I do, like I put it on the highest setting for temperature, like 400 degrees. For the specific Numi one that I have, some Numi ones you can adjust the temperature, but the one that I have you can't. And I know that this one goes up to like 425 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's really hot and that's a lot of heat on your hair. So I like to protect it with this and I found that it works really well. So I'm just going to spray this onto my hair now. Also, I have a mirror over there, so that's why I'm looking in this direction when I'm doing everything. You really want to make sure you focus this on the ends of your hair because like the ends are the oldest part of your hair, therefore the weakest because they've been there the longest. And not protecting your hair with heat protectant can really damage your ends and cause split ends. So that's why you really want to put some of this on the ends of your hair. So I just plugged my curler in, and another thing that I forgot to mention that I really like about the Numi ones is that they heat up really fast. Like, I'm pretty sure that this one can probably heat up in like two minutes. So as this is heating up, I'm just going to explain kind of what I do. And also, I'm going to be holding this if I'm explaining because I have nowhere to put it right now because I usually curl my hair in my bathroom, and I have a place to put it, like a heated, protected area that I can put it on so that I don't catch my house on fire. But in my filming setup, I don't, so I'm gonna hold this. So generally what I'll do is I'll put all my hair back behind my shoulders. And then what I'll do is I'll take a one inch strand, so about this much hair. For people with thicker hair like me, I would definitely say keep it to one inch. If you have thinner hair, maybe you could do a little bit more at a time, like one and a half to two inches. But for me, I found that the smaller chunks that I do, the better it looks and also the more long lasting they are because the heat can go to all of the hair, if that makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll put all of my hair back. Some people find it easier to put half the hair up and half the hair down than do like different chunks like that, but I find it just easier to put all my hair back and then focus on one inch at a time and then once I'm done with it, I'll put it in the front so that's how I know like what hair has been curled and what hasn't. So it's done heating up and again, I have a mirror over there so that's why I'm looking over there. But what I'm gonna do is I take this one inch section and then I put my curler, I put the wand downwards like this. Here, make sure I can frame. And then I will wrap my hair around like this. And I'll wrap all of my hair around. Make sure that your fingers don't touch the wand because it's very hot. And I'll hold it here for about five to eight seconds. Then I'm gonna let it go. And it looks like this. So this is very curly and it's very hot. And what I found is that I like to hold it in my hand like this and let it cool down a little bit. I really like it because it's so bouncy. <laughs> but what I like to do is right after I let it go from the wand, I just hold it in my hand for like three to five seconds before I let it go to just let it cool down in this shape. What I found before is that if I just like let it go right away, especially since I have thick hair, it's just gonna kind of weigh down and it's just like I apply heat and then I just let it go into its straight form again. So I just like to hold it for just like three to five seconds. I found that that really helps. Just make sure the curls last longer because they can 
kind of cool down this shape. So as I said before, I put the curl pieces in front of my body and the straight pieces in the back and that's how I know what hair has been curled and what needs to be curled. Also another tip is if you have thinner hair, you really don't need to put um, your hair around the barrel for like 8 seconds. That's, that can actually be too much and burn your hair. There's actually a really funny video that I'm sure you guys have probably seen on YouTube where a girl was curling her hair and then she burned off the chunk that she was curling because her hair was pretty thin and she put it on the wand for a little bit too long. So yeah, I'm sure you want to avoid that. So if you have thinner hair, you can really just leave your hair around the barrel for like 3 seconds, but I have thicker hair and I'm not concerned about it burning off because it is really thick. So I will generally keep it around the barrel for 5 to 8 seconds, more like 8 seconds. So yeah, I'm just going to show you guys a couple more times the same thing that I did to this section and then I will speed the clips up and just do kind of like a time lapse of me curling my hair. So again, I take a 1 inch section and then I will put my curler down. Oh, another thing is that you can wrap it around the front or you can wrap it around the back. Sometimes I do all front, sometimes I do all back, sometimes I'll do a mix to make it look more like natural. So it's really up to you and what you want to do. You want to make sure also that you don't start up at the very top and that you don't start at the very bottom, unless I mean you only want the bottom to be curled, but if you start up at the very top, it doesn't look very natural because then it looks like the curl is starting from your like scalp, which I mean for people with curly hair you might think that like, oh that looks more natural, but I found that if you start in the middle of your hair, like for me right about here, that is what provides the most natural results. So with that one inch curl, I'm just going to wrap it around, hold it for 5 to 8 seconds. And then release it, hold it in my hand, let it cool down for 3 to 5 seconds. Sometimes I'll just like scrunch it even a little bit, and then I'll release it. So again, I'm just going to take a one inch section. This time, as you can see, this one I went around the barrel this way, and for this section I want to go the other way. So I'm just going to wrap that around. Again, hold it for eight seconds-ish. that up a few times and let it go. Oops, there's a little stray hair piece in there. So yeah, it really is that easy and I just do this to all my hair and I'm going to do that from the camera for you guys right now and I'm just going to do a time lapse so you guys can see me curl the rest of my hair. Honestly, it's like an arm stretch to do the back of your head. <laughs> so I just finished curling all my hair. And honestly, at this point, you can really just look and see what kind of looks uneven or what you kind of want to touch up. And you can just go in those areas and then curl individual pieces again. Um, so I did a little bit of that with a few strands, but right now I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks. I think the most important thing to keep in mind when curling your hair 
is, at least for me personally, I'm not trying to make like the perfect curls or anything because I really want it to look as natural as possible. So even if like some curls are different than others, then it's really no problem and you don't have to really stress about that. At least for me personally, I find that it's just easier to just curl everything, see how it looks in the end, and adjust then. Also, another thing to note is when you first let it, the curl go, um, you can see that it's really like spiraled. And some people like that look, while others want a more natural look. So at this point, everything's kind of settled down. But if you want to make it even more natural, you can comb out the curls a little bit and that will just make them a little bit more cohesive and like more, what's the word, like your natural looking hair. But I like how it looks right now. I like it a little bit more on the curly side, especially since I have such straight hair. I like to change it up a little bit when I curl my hair. And so the final product that I use to set everything is a hairspray. And really, like any hairspray works. This is just the one that I have on hand right now. It's a big sexy hair spray and play volume nice volume night volumizing hairspray. That was mouthful. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of this. The more hairspray you add, obviously the stronger your curls will, will hold. But um, I don't wanna like make my curls crunchy-ish, if you know what I mean. Like when you apply too much hairspray, it can get really stiff, and I call that crunchy because like your hair literally like can bend. I don't know, that's what it kind of reminds me of. If you've ever applied way too much hairspray, you know that your hair is like super stiff and it's really hard to wash out and it's like when you like bend your hair, it like almost snaps. So yeah, that's why I call it crunchy-ish. Maybe that wasn't the best word to use. But yeah, I'm just going to be applying a little bit of this. And yeah, that's the final look, you guys. I really hope this video was helpful and informative for any of you guys who are first learning how to curl your hair or if you've been curling your hair forever and you just wanted a couple tips of mine. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I can definitely respond to those to the best of my ability. And also leave any video suggestions or ideas, like videos you want to see from me, down in the comments below because I definitely love to hear. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more videos because I'm definitely planning on creating as many videos as I can this summer and posting those up for you guys. So yeah, that's the end of this video and I hope you guys are doing super well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!